Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and I uh, hope everybody's okay. Uh, we're looking at God Will Fight For You in Exodus chapter 14. I'm in an internet cafe, so it's a bit noisy, so forgive me. And uh, I hope it's a blessing to you, uh, what I'm about to share today. So let's come before the Lord and ask his blessing uh, upon his word today. So we're looking at the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 14, the book of Exodus chapter 14. Let's come before the Lord. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and blessings. And Father, we give you the prayers of the glory today. And we pray, Lord, that you bless your word today. May your word be blessed in all our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Exodus, Exodus chapter 14. And so reading it, the word of God. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before the Firoth, uh, Fiheroth, between Migdol and the sea over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall they camp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land of the wilderness that shut them up in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, and the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, overtook them encamping by the sea beside the uh, Pi Harioth before uh, Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there were no graves in Egypt hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us from out of Egypt is not this the word that did tell thee in Egypt saying let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show unto you today. For the Egyptians, if you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Where in Christ thou unto me? Speak thou to the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the mist of the sea. Behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor and Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed, and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face, and stood behind them, and he came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by the strong east wind all the night, and made the sea dry and land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were uh, unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians uh, pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all the Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. It came to pass that in the morning, which the Lord looped unto the host of the Egyptians, through the pillar of fire and the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drove them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, 
and the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength, when the morning appeared, and the Egyptian fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea and after them. There remained not so much as one of them, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a war unto them, on the right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and Israel saw that the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So I want to ask the question, are you wanting something to happen in your life, but it seems impossible? A change of job, a change in relationship, a change in, in the terms that you may be want to get married, um, a change in your circumstances, whatever it is, you find that it's impossible. I want to say to you today that God will fight for you, that God is with you, so don't be afraid. If you turn to Isaiah 43, there's 1 to 5, Isaiah 43, Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 5 But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee I have called thee by name, thou art mine When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee When thou walkest through the fire, they shall not be burned Neither shall the, the flame kindle upon thee For I am the Lord thy God The Holy One of Israel, the Saviour And I have Egypt for ransom and Ethiopia a Seba for thee, since thou was precious in my sight, thou was being honourable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bring thy seed from the east, and gather thee from the west. Fear not, my friend, God is with you today. Whatever you need today, God will be with you. If you turn to Romans 8.28, Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28 Romans 8.28 my friend Romans 8.28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who were called according to his purpose for whom he foreknew he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren God knows you he knows your needs today and he will meet your needs my friend so God will fight for you when you make God your priority. When you make God your priority. Turn to Psalm 18, verse 1. Is God your priority today? You've got battles, you've got difficulties, you've got issues, but is God your priority? Verse Psalm 18, verse 1. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. He wants to put God first, you see. And then God will bless him. And then he says in verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Why? Because God is his strength. God is his strength. Uh, Nikki Cruz, uh, at 10 years of age, wanted to commit suicide. And uh, his mother told him she didn't love him. He, as he was trying to hang himself, his brother stopped him from hanging himself and at 10 years of age he went off and he left uh, home and he went to New York. He became a leader in the gangs of New York and uh, became a very violent man. Uh, anyway, in a little village in, in the outbacks of America, a preacher called David Wilkerson was told by God to go and preach to the gangs of New York. He goes to, the, to New York, he goes into the police station, the police say, we're not going with you. Uh, you need God because we ain't coming with you. So he goes into New York City where the gangs were. He opens a great big hall. Over a thousand gang members go in and he preaches the simple message of the cross. And as he preached that simple message, many, many gang members came down to the front and gave their hearts to the Lord. And one of them was Nicky Cruz. And he gave his heart to Jesus. He put his guns and his knife away and he became a savior, a servant of the Lord. And I want to say today that you need to know the Jesus, and as you know Jesus, he will fight for you. If you turn to Mark chapter 2, Mark chapter 2, verse 17. Matthew, Mark chapter 2, verse 17. When Jesus heard it, 
He said unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick, I care not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You think you're righteous? You need to repent, because we're not righteous. We're all sinners today. Romans chapter, and we've got to turn away from the old life and turn to the new life in Christ. Romans 3.21, put away your guns, put away your knives, put away the violence, put it all away.